In June 1976, a terrible secret came to light in France. The quiet town of Traves was convulsed by some pamphlets distributed among the residents. On them, the following could be read, Citizens, there is an SS criminal among us. The text then detailed that a 61-year-old man named Joaquin Paper, who had lived in the town for six years, was actually responsible for obscure war crimes. Although the defendant denied all the charges, the news spread throughout the national and international media, until Paper was forced to admit that he had been a German soldier. What the former Nazi did not know was that there was a group of people on the lookout, waiting for the right moment to make him pay for his crimes. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you all about the brutal execution of Joaquin Paper. Joaquin Paper was born on January 30, 1915, in Berlin, Germany, as the third child of a German army soldier. His father served as an officer until he had to retire due to malaria contracted in Africa. After recovering from the illness, he joined the Free Corps, far-right paramilitary groups dedicated to fighting communists. Young Joachim inherited from his mother a hatred of the Weimar Republic, democracy and the countries that had defeated Germany during the First World War. Unsurprisingly, he ended up joining the National Socialist Movement, joining the Hitler Youth when he was 18 years old. A year later he was admitted to the SS, the elite organization of Nazism, where only the most select members of the supposed Aryan race entered. He immediately did everything possible to capture the attention of their leader, Heinrich Himmler, until he became one of his trusted men. In the following years, this relationship would help him climb positions within the movement. In 1935, Paper attended military school to train as an officer in a tank division. Despite the fact that he demonstrated an aptitude for leadership, he was on the verge of failing the psychological tests. The instructors noted that he had a toxic personality and worrying self-centeredness, two characteristics that made it likely that he would, in the future, become an undisciplined subordinate or an arrogant officer. In a sense, the forecasts were right in saying that Paper would be a troublesome man, although what was truly serious would be his murderous tendencies. On the eve of the Second World War, he had already become the liaison officer between Himmler and the Führer, being present at meetings of the Nazi staff, where the future of the Third Reich was discussed. Between 1939 and 1940, after the outbreak of the war, Paper accompanied Himmler on an inspection tour of the concentration camps administered by Germany. It was on this occasion that our protagonist witnessed the death machine devised by Nazism. He watched as prisoners were killed with lethal gas, a novel method of execution that, in the years that followed, would take the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. None of this managed to move him, on the contrary, the suffering of others seemed to have no effect on his psyche. Soon after, when Germany launched its conquest of France, he was commissioned as an officer in a tank regiment, and had his baptism of fire in a brief battle against French artillery. In 1941, with the start of Operation Barbarossa and the invasion of the Soviet Union, Paper was sent to fight on the Eastern Front, where he earned a reputation as a bloody and ruthless man. The unit he led became known as the Arson Battalion, because it raised two Russian villages without hesitation. Paper discovered that the inhabitants had collaborated with the Red Army, helping to hide the bodies of dead German soldiers. As revenge, he ordered all the houses and establishments in the area to be set on fire. At the same time that the flames devoured everything in their path, the inhabitants were shot with machine guns. At the end of 1944, the leader of the incendiary battalion had a leading role in the Ardennes Offensive. This operation was devised by Hitler himself, and consisted of a massive and desperate attack through the region located between Luxembourg and Belgium. There, in a wooded, snow-lashed wasteland, the Germans hoped to rout the American troops. On December 17 of that year, Paper was patrolling a road near the Belgian village of Malmody, accompanied by his tanks and armored vehicles. Suddenly, they spotted a small convoy of 30 American trucks marching down the road. Paper's troops surrounded them and a brief fight ensued after which the Americans surrendered. It was then that one of the most terrible war crimes in the Ardennes was unleashed. 
the commander of the Infernal Battalion ordered his troops to lead the Americans to a nearby farm. The captured ones marched in single file, not knowing what awaited them, but suspecting that hell was coming. When they reached their destination, the Germans stood in front of them, armed with machine guns, and after paper gave the signal, they fired. 84 people fell, pierced by dozens of projectiles, and the dying were finished off with shots to the head. Some Americans took advantage of the chaos and confusion to run, managing to take cover in a nearby building. But that was not enough, since the Germans threw torches into the place and set it on fire, leaving the survivors to burn to death inside. The event became known as the Malmody Massacre and caused great outrage among the U.S. Army. Joaquin Paper continued to fight for the Burmacht, retreating further and further as Hitler's enemies closed in on Germany. Finally, in May 1945, when the Third Reich had collapsed, he was captured by the Americans. An investigation was immediately launched which determined that he had been most responsible for the Malmody carnage. He was sentenced to death by hanging, but, even under these circumstances, Paper still had an ace up his sleeve. He claimed that the witnesses who testified against him had been tortured into speaking, rendering their words invalid. On the other hand, Paper also denounced that he had suffered mistreatment at the hands of U.S. prison guards. This, combined with the help of former SS members who used his contacts in the judicial system, allowed his death sentence to be commuted to a prison term. In this way, he was released on December 22, 1956. From then on, he got a job as a car salesman at the Volkswagen and Porsche companies. He kept a low-profile life, although he participated in a relief network for former SS members. He never reneged on his Nazi ideals, but he made sure no one knew his true identity. In 1970 he moved with his family to a small house located in Traves, France. Paper was convinced that he was no longer in danger, but he was wrong. In 1976, when he was 61 years old, a series of pamphlets began to circulate in his neighborhood. As we told you at the beginning of the video, they stated that Joachim had belonged to the SS, and they asked to expel him from the country. The smear campaign was a success, and all the media covered it. Cornered and with his secret out in the open, the former leader of the burning battalion requested help from the French police, who provided him with an escort during the day. The situation continued to escalate, to the point where he received death threats by phone and his wife had to leave home for her safety. Finally, the moment of truth arrived on July 14, 1976, that is, during the most important national date in France, Bastille Day. That night, a group of people approached Paper's house, cut the wire fence that protected it, entered the garden and from there threw Molotov cocktails at him. The former Nazi officer spotted the attackers, leaned out of the window, armed with a shotgun and a revolver, and fired at them. The bullets lost their way into the darkness and missed none of the targets. Meanwhile, the flames spread around him. Joaquin Piper was living the same as many of his victims. He tried to save his wife's clothes and important documentation from the fire, throwing everything out the window. However, he was surrounded by the smoke, which penetrated his lungs and caused him to collapse. Minutes later, firefighters arrived at the scene, which by then had become a funeral pyre. When the fire was cleared, they found Paper's body. All that was left of the man was a charred ruin, identifiable only by the watch he still wore on his wrist. Later, it would be known that the attack was the work of an anti-Nazi group called the Avengers, although those responsible were never caught. In this way, 30 years after the end of the war, Joachim Paper paid for his crimes. We have reached the end of the video, leave us your comment in the tray below and do not forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.